What's up everybody? Welcome to another installment of Tech Depth Teardown. Today we are going to be looking inside the iPhone 12 Pro Max, seeing its components. So first we're going to be using some isopropyl alcohol, 99% around the edge of the phone to loosen up that adhesive. These phones are rated IP68, meaning ingress protection against liquids and solids. It also means Apple uses a strong adhesive. So we have the heat map set to 90 degrees. Anything above 90 degrees can cause some thermal damage and 90 degrees should work fine. Obviously here we have the infamous pentalobe screws. We're using the 0.8 millimeter pentalobe screwdriver here. One thing to note about the iPhone 12 Pro Max is Apple uses a soft OLED uh, Super Retina screen, so the screen is pretty flexible, but you don't generally want to bend them too much. There's still the potential to create lines in the screen or God forbid a crack, of course. So we end up using a suction cup along with a curved screen disassembler or a curved pry tool. That's what you're gonna see them called online. We have them available for you at techdep.com. The benefit here is these tools have a ton of flex as opposed to something like the eye opener or the flexible pry tool which are both a bit stiffer and straighter and don't have as much give when you're trying to be gentle with the screen and this is pretty important as you really want to make sure you don't rip the cable on the right side of the phone that are the connectors to the LCD and the digitizer or the touch screen. So, in general, we're trying to not pry too hard when disassembling the screen like this. Just gentle, methodical, all the way around the screen in steps, some light prying to progressively get rid of that adhesive. And if all goes well, it should open just like a book. There we go. So now that it's open, we're removing the tri-wing screws for the main board, again using a 0.8 screwdriver. 0.8 millimeters is generally the preferable size for disassembling this phone. Pentalobe, tri-wing, across the board. And on top of this is the proximity sensor, which is the sensor that tells your iPhone to turn off the display as you place it near your ear, or inside your pocket, things of that nature. There's also a link to the top speaker, so this phone, the 12 Pro Max, is the last of its kind in that it is the last iPhone to have the top speaker actually embedded in the screen rather than within the frame, as you can see. Uh, after this phone, there's a new design where the top speaker is actually embedded in the frame itself. So next we are removing the tri-wing screws for the faceplate on the rear back camera. This is to make sure there's no dust, no liquid that can damage those lenses for the rear camera. This is standard Apple design they've been following for quite a while now. Okay, and now that we got that faceplate off, we are disconnecting the flex cables that are connected to the sandwich board. No inside glue, no adhesive here. They should pop in and out, sort of like a puzzle. Definitely important to be mindful at this stage as there are some mini ribbon cables underneath the flex cables. So a good step here is to be safe. You disconnect all of the flex cables you can see connected to the sandwich board. And that should be the last ribbon cable of the rear back camera. This phone also has a space within the rear camera for a LiDAR scanner for AR augmented reality. This is one of the first phones that had this LiDAR scanner. I believe Apple first introduced it with the iPhone 12 Pro. This allows for a kind of scanning environments and creating an AR experience. Next up, we are going to be unscrewing the components of the dock, which includes the Taptic engine, which is a really cool piece of technology. It's what's responsible for creating the vibrations and force feedback from your iPhone and giving each vibration for each use case with the phone such a different feel. And if that sounds interesting to you, I'd recommend reading about it. It is a really interesting piece of tech. And maybe if you guys want, we can make a whole video on how that engine works. We also have the bottom loudspeaker, which is actually a stereo speaker, even though it's only one piece. It connects to the top speaker to generate that stereo system, which is also a pretty interesting piece of tech. So here we are removing the torque screws of the sandwich board. You can see the sandwich board consists of three main torque screws linked to the same reader. One thing to note about the iPhone 12 Max sandwich board is 
We need to remove the battery to get to the 5G module connection at the right inner edge of the frame. We proceed by removing the Taptic engine. There you see. Always is connected to the dock of the charging port, usual design for Apple. Apple also has a habit of making certain key pieces of the tech inaccessible without removing unrelated pieces. I think they do this on purpose to incentivize, or rather disincentivize messing with the product, but who knows. Here we're using more of the isopropyl 99 on the battery. We like to use this isopropyl just because it's very easy to dissolve the glue underneath the battery with proper time, usually about five to 10 minutes without disturbing it instead of risking tearing the pull tabs of the battery, which you can see they are very small. So there's a high risk of tearing them apart. So we prefer to just use the isopropyl, let it do its thing, use some chemistry and keep it all intact. And there you go. You can see the isopropyl has no problem. Then we remove the sticker that protects the 5G module antenna connector, which is actually soldered to the motherboard so there is no way to remove the motherboard unless we deal with the battery first so just unscrew the phillips screw and disconnect that connector as you'll see So the way that 5G module is inserted is actually just underneath the NFC wireless pad. Here we are unscrewing that SIM card reader, which you'll see in a second. There she is, SIM card reader. Then we're gonna remove the last mainboard screw. And there you have it, the sandwich board of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. We have Made sure to get rid of the adhesive underneath the 5G module connect and flex cable. Sometimes they can be a little bit tricky, a little bit hidden. One thing also to note about the sandwich board is they are also linked to the front camera for the face ID sensor, which means if you're trying to replace your front camera because your selfie camera doesn't work, uh, because of that serial number not matching the logic board, you won't be able to have face ID enabled. So the only way to have face ID intact is to have the motherboard linked to that selfie camera. And there is that selfie camera, 12 megapixel linked to the face ID sensors. So that was our teardown of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. If you guys enjoy this content, give it a like, please subscribe, comment, let us know what kind of videos you would like to see in the future. It is the best way to support the channel. And if you have any needs for parts, computers, repairs, anything else, interesting information about tech, Head on over to techdep.com, see what we've got going on over there. And we appreciate you guys for your time, and we will see you next time.